Good morning, church. Welcome to you on this Sabbath day, on this Stewardship Sunday. We are blessed to be together, blessed to be called the family of God. For worship today, you want to remind you that the worship sheets are available on the lnpc.org website. You Apple users, you know there's a little icon at the top of those sheets. Click on that, and that allows you to then scroll down through the sheets. I want to continue to remind you of the gathering. The gathering is a delightful, informal time of, of praise music and worship and prayer. We're moving back into Guard Hall. It's, it's getting a little chilly at, at 4 p.m. in the afternoon. So we, we want to encourage you to invite a friend. Wear a mask. You don't need to bring chairs with you anymore um, as we gather t- uh, today at 4 p.m. We also want to let you know about a fun Christmas-themed uh, drive-in movie event that will be on Friday, December 4th. The parking lot opens at 5.15. We'll have some fun, safe Christmas caroling. And then at 6 p.m., we will show the Christmas classic, It's a Wonderful Life. And we invite you to please RSVP to the church office. There's much that's going on in the life of the church. We hope that you're paying close attention to the e-blast or, or perhaps going to the website for the latest news. On Friday, we mailed out an extensive letter regarding our procedures for having in-person worship beginning once again on November 29th. We've been in conversations with churches here in Orange County, as well as across the denomination to learn from those churches that have actually been doing this for some period of time. And without exception, the word is that, that we can have the absolute best procedure in the world but it depends upon the grace and the kindness and the patience of the congregation. You may not be sitting where you're used to sitting. Everyone will be masked and will need to continue to be masked throughout the entire service. And both health and temperature screens will be used prior to entry. There'll be a reservation system that allows us to maximize attendance. And all this is explained in the mailing, and so we hope that you'll pray Pay careful attention to that letter. And yes, we will continue to live stream the service every Sunday for those who do not feel comfortable about being in the sanctuary and also for those across the country who are worshiping with us every Sunday via live stream. It will be wonderful to be back together again in person in worship. We believe that our process is well designed, but again, it depends upon an abundance of grace. If you have any questions, please feel free to to email me with those questions. We will start taking reservations, and the RSVP tab will be available to us beginning on November 23rd. I want to invite you now to join with me in our call to worship. I will give thanks to God. I will trust and will not be afraid. The Lord God is my strength and my might. God God has become become my my salvation. salvation. Let us be true to our calling to follow Christ. Shout Shout aloud and sing for for joy, for for great in your midst is the Holy One. I invite you now to please join with me in prayer. Great and compassionate God, here this day we have come to worship you. Here in this place we have come together to feel and know your loving and forgiving power. Remind us that your love is so great that even all the evils and challenges and violence in our world cannot overwhelm that mighty love. Turn our hearts totally to your mercy and grace. And in our time of worship, may we again know the full power of your eternal love. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, our Savior and our friend. Amen. Good morning, church. Would you please rise if you're able and sing with me. Praises to God. Strength arises, we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength arises, we wait. You lift us up on wings like eagles. 
Thank you, Lily. We have been set free by the power of Christ. Oh, so much to be grateful for today. Would you please join me now in our prayer of confession? Holy God, we know what is right, to love God and love neighbor, but we do not do it. We know what is wrong, injustice, oppression, self-centeredness, greed, but we persist in doing it. We have become ensnared by our own petty desires, and when we try to free ourselves, we become tangled in our own good intentions. You alone can break the bonds of our sin, O oh God. You alone have the grace to free us from these knots that holds us captive. Free us, loving God. Liberate us for authentic living and obedient service in your name. Forgive us as we confess to you our sinfulness. Amen. Hear this good news. God brings us into life again and again through the love of Christ our Lord. Receive the gift of forgiveness for your shortcomings and go forward with your life in the certainty that God loves you so much that no matter what, he is with you. Praise be to God. Amen. I invite you now to join with us as we sing our joyful response to God's great mercy and love. And now, as God's forgiven people, we invite you to share that joy that you have as God's beloved, either with your people in your own home or through comments on Facebook. Let us now pass that joy and peace that we have in Christ. The peace of Christ be with you, Lily. And now we are blessed to have CM as she leads us through the children's time. Good morning. I'd like to welcome the children to gather around for this morning's children's message. Good morning, boys and girls. I'm here with two of our fuzzy friends this morning. I'm here with Mr. Lion and Mr. Polar Bear. Well, Thanksgiving is coming up soon. So we've been talking this morning about things that we're thankful for. Mr. Polar Bear said that he is thankful for chocolate chip cookies. He just loves chocolate chip cookies, so he's very thankful for cookies. Now, Mr. Lion said that he's thankful for his purple toothbrush. He likes his purple toothbrush. It keeps his teeth clean and it keeps his breath smelling great when he roars. Well, both of these fuzzy friends are thankful for friends, like Mr. Walrus. And all three of these fuzzy friends are thankful that God made them, and they're also thankful for the gift of Jesus. So you see, our fuzzy friends are giving thanks to God for all of the things that they are thankful for. And they give thanks to God when things are good, and also on days when things aren't as good. 
So boys and girls, my message to you is give thanks to God for all you are thankful for. And not only on Thanksgiving, but always, every day, give thanks to God. Let's sing our prayer song and then we'll pray. God is always near me. God will always hear me when I pray. Bow your heads with me, boys and girls. Dear loving God, thank you so much for the gift of Jesus. Thank you so much for the Bible. Thank you so much for our friends, our family, and all of our blessings. We will give you thanks, God. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. So boys and girls, I hope you have a beautiful Sunday. And remember, give thanks to God. Bye-bye for now. Thank you, CM. And those are my favorites, too. So grateful and thankful for Jesus Christ and for chocolate chip cookies. That was really excellent. Thank you, CM. Now, let us hear the first lesson for today. It's from Psalm 100. Hear the word of the Lord. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing and know the Lord is God. It is he that made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. I invite you now to open up those Bibles that you have with you there at home. Fire up your Bible app if that's your, your uh, text of choice. And open up to James chapter 1. We're going to read just a few verses, 16 through 18. James chapter 1, verses 16 through 18. Hear now God's word for us this morning. Do not be deceived, my beloved. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation of shadow or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Here ends our scripture reading for today. I invite you to join with me in prayer. Lord God, what an encouragement it is to know that we are the fruit of your creative process, that we have been purposefully designed and filled with gifts and talents and abilities by you for your purposes. Lord God, we are people of great value 
because of who our maker is. And we just thank you, Lord God, for your love, for your providential care for us, for the fact that you are our God. And now as we think together in this season of thanksgiving about what it means to be thankful, we ask that your Holy Spirit would speak to us, that your Holy Spirit would stir us, would encourage us, would challenge us, would challenge us. On this day we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. For some time now we have been thinking together about characteristics, about attributes, about those values and principles that are, or or at least should be, characteristics of a Christian life well lived. This lengthy series started as a description of these values and the hope and the prayer that an intentional conversation about them might lead to a more intentional expression of these values in our lives, in our places of work, in our places of play, in our relationships, and yes, even in our voting. The value of intentionally expressing these values is grounded in the belief and the conviction that it is through the expression of these faith values that we then become the salt of the earth, a lit lamp providing light in the darkness. It is through the intentional expression of what we believe that faith becomes relevant, a force in the world for for personal transformation and communal good. Nowhere is this more true, at least in the area of, of personal transformation, than in the Christian value of thankfulness. In a season of COVID and lockdowns, in a season of anger and discontentment over big government intrusion into our personal lives, I believe a faithful understanding of the process of gratitude, thankfulness, and thanksgiving is a remedy to much of the angst that surrounds us now. I believe that the values constellation of gratitude and thankfulness and thanksgiving is a way of dealing with uncertainty and the accompanying fear. First, for many of us, this is a season of fear. COVID has brought to us great uncertainty. The political season has us wondering about our personal and national future. In a study completed and published by the University of Michigan Health Lab in May of 2018, it was declared then that 39% of Americans described themselves as more anxious and fearful in 2018 than they were in 2017. And and lest we think that this study was an outlier, another study, this time done in May of 2020, just a few months ago, by a different organization, stated that now 51% of the American population, more than half of our population, describe themselves as anxious and fearful. Now there are probably a number of things that we can be doing to reduce that percentage. A a healthy response to fear and anxiety could easily be unique to each individual, employing a variety of tools But I find it very interesting to read the findings of Dr. Dan Baker in his book, What Happy People Know. He writes that it is a fact of neurology, this isn't an opinion, it is a fact of neurology that the brain cannot be in a state of appreciation and a state of fear at the same time. 
The two states might alternate, but they are in fact mutually exclusive in our brains. Similarly, a, a study out of Indiana University found that having a profound sense of gratitude unshackles us from toxic emotions, helps you to have a, a greater sense of appreciation for people in your life, and may actually have long-term positive effects on brain functioning. So not only is, is gratitude and thankfulness an answer to the fear that threatens to absorb so many of us, I would suggest that gratitude and thankfulness are the antidote to the toxic emotion of entitlement that seems to capture so many of us. It is entitlement that says to us that we deserve more, deserve more. It's a sense of entitlement that says that we are owed a comfortable, easy life. It is a sense of entitlement that says that the gifts that we have, the blessings that have been showered upon us are not gifts. They are simply what we are due. It is a sense of entitlement, one author suggests, that leads us to say to God, not your way, but my way. I know what is best for me. So God, you had better give it to me now. Entitlement is easy to see in others. It is much harder to see and admit to in ourselves. Friends, gratitude overwhelms the toxic emotion of entitlement. But all this begs a question, doesn't it? What, what are we grateful for? And here I believe our text is profoundly helpful. James, the brother of Jesus, known as James the Just, and one of the early leaders amongst the Jewish Christians, is writing to believers across the Roman Empire who are struggling with both poverty and increasing persecution. And as a result of this twin trouble, fear and anxiousness and dissension are high. And James writes his very practical letter to call these Jewish Christians back to a wisdom and a lifestyle that honors Christ. But don't lose sight in the midst of that purpose for his letter of the fact that James writes to a fearful people and reminds them that every good thing in their life, every blessing, every single thing that they give thanks over comes to them and also to us as a gift from God. Do you hear that? As the text says, every generous act of giving, every perfect gift that we have received finds its beginning in God. Many of us go through life, says Tim Keller, suffering under the delusion of complete self-sufficiency. We believe that we are solely responsible for who we are. Our success in life has come directly from the way that we have shaped it. A friend of mine from Charlotte is fond of saying, we find ourselves born on third base. And somehow we think that we have hit a triple. This is not to say that we haven't worked hard, 
This is not to say that we haven't exercised and developed those muscles of passion and commitment that have resulted in worldly success, but it is to say that we didn't create ourselves. God created us. God filled us with gifts and passions and abilities that have resulted in the success we enjoy today. God is the source, the originator of every good thing in our life, including Jesus Christ and our very redemption. So gratitude begins with the awareness that we are, or at least should be, grateful for a multitude of things that are present in our lives. Gratitude is an inward feeling that we are the beneficiaries of God's goodness, of God's grace and love and care. Gratitude then inevitably leads us to a sense of thankfulness. As we recognize God as the source, as the very lifeblood of everything that is good in our lives, that these things exist not as our due, but instead out of the love of God, how can we not express a sense of thankfulness to God for all that he is and for all that he has done? Do you see why then that I say that thankfulness, as a part of that process of, of gratitude and thankfulness and thanksgiving, is an essential part of the character of every believer? <laughs> In this season of thanksgiving, on the eve of Advent and Christmas, that's a, that's a fairly obvious sermon to preach, but here then, is where I'm gonna go from preaching to meddling. It is one thing to be grateful. It may make perfect sense as we acknowledge that all the good things that, we, that we've received do in fact come from God. To have in our souls a sense of, of thankfulness for all that God has done, but it is another thing altogether as Tim Keller writes, to express our thankfulness in an act of thanksgiving. The difference is this. Gratitude and thanksgiving are internal emotions. Thanksgiving is an action. It is what you actually do as the fulfillment or reflection of your gratitude. Gratitude and thanksgiving lead to tangible expressions of thanksgiving. Friends, what are you thankful for today? And how will that sense of thankfulness result in some tangible act of thanksgiving? Fear and the toxic emotion of entitlement are minimized by a vibrant and faithful sense of gratitude and thankfulness. The emotions of gratitude and thankfulness, the recognition that we have been blessed, is followed up by the action of thanksgiving. What tangible acts of thanksgiving are you ready, willing, and excited to express? Maybe there are folks who have been great blessings in your life, siblings, spouses, children, dear friends. In this age of email, how nice would a would a handwritten note of thankfulness to that person who's a blessing in your life would be. Maybe, maybe it's your neighborhood, your community, your town, even your state and nation. What acts of, of volunteerism could you conduct as an expression 
of thankfulness? What about your places of employment or volunteering? Maybe a, a gift of coffee or, or refreshments could express your thankfulness for this place that allows you to express your gifts and passions. Finally, what about your church? What about this, this primary place for most of us where we experience God, where we are reminded of Christ's atoning work for us and where we experience the transforming work of the Holy Spirit? What about the church as a place where we experience grace and love compassion and life-giving fellowship. What about the church? Stewardship Sunday reminds us that our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings are expressions of thankfulness for all that God has done for us. You know, through the years, I have... I've had folks lift up for me the traditions of other faith groups who simply assess members a fee as the cost of being members of that group. Some look at the Old Testament tradition of, of temple taxes and suggest that the, the easiest, most efficient way of ensuring that the church has adequate financial resources is to conduct this kind of work, to make an equal assessment across the board as the price attached to being a member. And, and they may be right. It may be efficient. It, may, it certainly takes all the guesswork out of the budgeting process but it also takes out all the joy. Yes, we give, we tithe as an expression of obedience to the biblical call of the tithe, but much more importantly, we give, we pledge as an act of thankfulness, as an act of, of recognition that every good thing does in fact come from God. We give not, not as a response to an assessment, but as an act of obedience and thanksgiving for the redeeming works of Jesus Christ and for the kingdom work and abiding love of the church. May God richly bless us as God always does. And then may we respond with lives of gratefulness, thankfulness, and acts of thanksgiving for all that God has done and will continue to do in our lives and our church. Amen. We are a richly blessed people. We are blessed with faith. We're blessed with one another. And now in response to God's goodness, we respond with gifts, tithes, and offerings that reflect our thanksgiving. Today we also offer to God our pledges of financial support for the church as an act of obedience and thanksgiving. Let us now pray to God, reflecting our gratitude and asking for God's blessings on these gifts. Let's pray together. 
gracious and all-giving God, on this Sabbath day, we have much to be thankful for. For life, for the beauty of creation, for homes, for relationships, for places of employment and play that are meaningful and life-giving, we give you thanks. Our very salvation is a gift given to us from you through Jesus Christ. In response to all that you are, in response to our salvation made possible in Jesus Christ, in response to the gift of the church, we offer to you our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings. In addition, on this Stewardship Sunday, we lift up to you these pledges of our financial support for the life and ministry of your church. Bless them and us as we try to be faithful Bless these pledges. Bless them and receive them as an act of thanksgiving on our part, as a reflection of the gratitude and the thankfulness that we have for all that you have given to us. Thank you, Lord God, for being our God. And it is in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Thank you, LMPC Choir. How majestic is God, our God, who loves us and is with us always. If you're able to, as you're sitting at home, uh, I invite you now to get down on your knees as we pray and invite the divine into our presence. Our powerful prayers are the most amazing thing that we can ever do. And if you're not able to get down on your knees, just sit back and relax as we raise our voice together as one. Let's pray together. God of grace and compassion, you are the one whose spirit hovered over the waters at creation. You made a world that is breathtaking and life-giving, and we thank you for creating and shaping the moon and the stars, for creating so much beauty and variety, and for revealing yourselves to us 
through the beauty of a hummingbird and the power of a stormy sea. It is with deep gratitude that we acknowledge that you formed humanity in your image, breathing your spirit into all of us. You know us better than we know ourselves, Lord, so let your love flow through us onto others. Help us to feed the hungry, shelter the homeless, support the sick, and give comfort to the lonely. Lord, guide us to see others through the eyes of Jesus with love and honor and humility. Wake us up, Lord, as we pray for your church to become the beacon of hope for this broken world where the true freedom, the true love and compassion and healing hope of Jesus Christ come to unify all. Let your spirit hover over our land and pour down your grace, your compassion, and your kindness on all of us. Bring us together and heal and unify us for your glory. Lord, be with those in authority. Give them wisdom and discernment for the journey ahead. Keep our country healthy as we wait for a vaccine to give us patience and to give everyone your peace that surpasses all understanding, reminding us that you are still on the throne and you are more powerful than any earthly politics or conflict or chaos. And we thank you, Lord, that you are with us here at LNPC. We pray for healing for those suffering from physical, emotional, or spiritual pain for those who are grieving the loss of a loved one, those struggling to return to a new normal life, and those who no longer feel safe, those who are lonely, and those struggling to forgive, and those who are fearful and depressed. Lord, you are the creator of healing and the God of love. So send your Holy Spirit's compassion to your family here present and keep us hearts and thoughts in Christ Jesus, your Son, our Savior, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. How has God blessed you in your life? In response to that blessing, how will you respond with acts of thanksgiving that demonstrate your gratitude and thankfulness? Thankfulness and thanksgiving are hallmarks of the Christian faith. How will we demonstrate those attributes together? Choose the Lord this day and always. Serve the Lord in this moment and the next. 
Love the Lord in your heart and with all your strength. Praise the Lord in your gladness and sadness. Give thanks with acts that reflect your gratitude and thankfulness. Be at peace in the Lord now and forever. Amen.